everybody, it's Wendy, and today I am here doing a special video with my niece, Lainey. Wave your fingers, Lainey. <laughs> That's her, and we are going to do two Heishi bead necklaces, okay? So, these are the Heishi beads. Um, I have got white um, papaya whip, which is like a slightly pink tone. You can't really see the pink in it unless you're really, really, unless you have it right next to white and a teal color, and Lainey has got lemon, baby pink, and salmon, okay? Um, now, she's got a little turtle that she's going, a little turtle charm that she's going to be putting, a turtle bead that she's going to be putting on hers, and I've got a charm, because I'm doing a multi-strand, so I've got this charm that I'm going to be putting on mine, and this uh, coin bead that's going to go on there, okay? So I'm going to tell you everything that you're going to need. So if you want to do the single strand Heishi bead necklace, you're going to need whatever colors of Heishi beads you want. We have got 49 strand tiger tail here. This is Beadalon 49 strand tiger tail. Laney's, let me measure yours, Laney. Laney's is cut about 12, probably close to 24 inches. Yeah, right about 24 inches for hers, and she's got a bead stopper on the end. Um, so if you want to do the single strand, about 24 inches, you can measure it how you want it on your neck, of course, but that's how she's got hers. Then we've got a little turtle bead, her Heishi beads. We have a lobster clasp. We have two um, clamshell covers and two crimp beads. Okay, so that is Lainey's stuff. And then for the multi-strand necklace, you're going to need several lengths of the tiger tail. So I've got about 24 inches for my longest strand. For my second longest strand, I have got about 14 inches. And for my two sides, I have about 11 inches each. Okay, so two 11s, a 14, and a 24 inch. And again, this is 49 strand beadalon tiger tail. Okay, um, I've got Heishi beads here. These are the colors I'm using. Again, it's the four millimeter teal, the eight, uh, six millimeter papaya whip, and the eight millimeter white. She's going to be using some of the eight millimeter white, I think, on hers too. And then I've got a charm for my top or my bottom strand. I've got the coin bead for my top strand. I've got a couple of bead stoppers. I have two closed rings that we're going to be using to connect our strands onto. I have a lobster claw clasp. I have six frosted glass beads. These are eight millimeter. I have some um, four millimeter rose gold spacers. I have some six millimeter flat wavy spacers in rose gold. I have some crimp beads. These are one millimeter. And I have some lava beads. These are six millimeter. And I have some clamshell covers here and jump rings as well. Okay, so all of this stuff, well, most of this stuff is available on my website. The Heishi beads are, the lava beads are. I do have clamshell covers and I do have some um, flat spacer beads, but they're not rose gold. I have different colors. Um, I do have spacer beads and the frosted glass. So just about everything that we're using is available on my website. Um, I do not have these charms, but I do have other charms, so you can check those out. Okay, so we're going to get started. So the first thing Lainey's going to do is just start stringing her um, beads on in whatever pattern she wants to use. Did you want to use a, spacer, a metal spacer bead on yours? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you probably need a silver one. So right there behind me our silver spacer beads so if you want to get in there and just pick out some that you like you can do that that it is right here all that so Lainey's picking out some silver spacer beads so while she's doing that we're going to get started with our our longest layer of our necklace okay actually we're going to do the shorter layer because then I can measure how long I want the longer layer to be so this is going to be my shorter layer this is the 14 inch um, piece of tiger tail so the first thing I'm going to do is put a bead stopper on here because this keeps me from having to restring beads that fall off. <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and string the Heishi beads on and these silver beads on and some of these. Now the frosted glass and the lava beads I'm going to leave for the other strand, okay? 
So, I'm just going to start stringing these on. I like to start with, that is a clamshell cover. I like to start with a spacer bead. I just think it looks cute with a spacer bead. And then I'm just going to take these Heishi beads and in no particular order, I'm just going to start stringing them on. Now I'm going to mix the 8mm and the 6mm. I'm going to mix the teal ones in. I'm just not going to do any specific pattern. Just, you know, very, very random. So let me get a pile of these over here. Okay. And then I'm going to do a couple of the rose gold wavy space spacer beads. And then I'm just going to continue on like this. Just mixing them in no certain pattern. I love these beads. Um, I know I've made a couple of earring videos out of them. Um, I did a bracelet tutorial, and Lainey and I are actually going to do a ring at some point. Sorry, guys, if you're hearing Sadie growling, she is, I think, attacking the cat. He attacks her right back, so don't get alarmed. He's not being abused in any way. <laughs> um, so I'm just stringing these on. Okay. And again, no specific pattern at all. So Lainey and I went and got our nails done today. As you can see, my nails usually look horrible. I actually went and had them done. So they should be looking good right now. It's not going to last, I can guarantee that, because I'm really rough on my nails, but, you know, at least they're done right now. Alright, going to add on a couple more rose gold wavy spacers. And I'm just, again, not doing any pattern. I'm just randomly picking them up, putting them on. I don't want this to be um, at all uniform. I like it random. So getting these all on here. Now that I don't know. You'll just have to look in there and see. <laughs> you can dump that out in the floor if you need to. Because all of my be my spacer beads are just mixed in one big container. She's looking for silver ones. Alright, so I'm gonna add a few more rose gold on here. Yeah, I do have a lot of gold. I was lacking a lot of gold, so I went and bought a lot of gold. And now I have too many gold. And not enough of everything else, apparently. It's the way it seems to go. Alright, so we're just going ahead and adding these on. Oh, and by the way, I did want to make a huge announcement that I finally reached 10,000 subscribers today. I'm so excited. So there are going to be a couple of giveaways coming up. I'm going to do a tutorial and give away the product that we make in the tutorial. So it's going to be fun. Um, so keep an eye out for those announcements, those announcement videos. There's going to be, like I said, a couple different giveaways, but I haven't uh, got it together yet. But I'm so excited, and some of you guys have been with me since the very, very beginning, and I just... Really appreciate everybody that subscribes. I don't know all of those eight millimeters in a row. Um, and comments and stuff. And if you haven't joined my Facebook page, if you're on Facebook, go on over and join my Facebook page because we have a lot of good conversations over there. It's fun. Okay, so Lainey's found her beads and she is going to start stringing her single strand necklace here. So I think let me see if they can see your hands yes you can see her hands so she's doing what i'm doing just she's doing a single strand she got her nails done today too show them your nails aren't they pretty they're very very pretty all right and she got her ears pierced today too so she didn't cry or anything she was very brave <laughs> she said it didn't hurt i was nearly 30 when i got my ears pierced and i almost passed out because they got the gun stuck in my ear and couldn't get it couldn't get the earring to come out or couldn't get it to go through it was very traumatic mm -hmm. then I definitely would cry. yeah I didn't cry but I got really woozy <laughs> it was it was not good it took like 10 seconds. yeah it took them all of 10 seconds to pierce her ears I couldn't believe how quick and easy it was and she didn't even wince it was like I don't know could you even tell they did it like you did you could tell they did it she didn't Barely. act like it <laughs> 
Yeah. So we've done our nails and we've she's got her ears pierced. We've been to Myrtle Beach where Lainey found all kinds of really awesome shells. Like she is the shell whisperer. I've never <laughs> seen anything like it. I go and walk for hours on the beach and can't find the shells that she found these big, huge, twisty ones and really, really nice shells. I was impressed. Yeah, she said she had to walk kind of far out, which means like to her knees because <laughs> she was not far out. <laughs> no, you should see people that go way out. I want to do that. I'm scared of sharks. Yeah, me too. I'm scared of sharks too. I'm, I'm not about to go out where I can't see the bottom of or my feet anyway. Okay, so I'm just stringing these up. Not doing any specific pattern. Again. And she's doing a pattern, I think, on hers. Yeah, she's doing a specific pattern, so you'll see that here in a minute. All right. Can I see your hands? Not really. You're back too far. <laughs> Gotta go forward. It's hard to stay in frame. If you've never done this, you don't realize how hard it is to stay in frame when you're trying to make something. But people get very angry if you don't stay in frame, so... I've been yelled at a lot on YouTube, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> so here we go. We're just, I'm still just stringing this along. And I'm not going to put my charm on until the end or until I get this strung up because I want to make sure that I get it in the very middle. And so when I get this strung up, I will hold the ends together and then I'll put the charm on. That's just kind of how I like to do it. You don't have to do it that way. If you just want to measure and be precise, you can but I don't want to. So this is what we're doing. We're going on a shelling tour. I'm kind of excited now that I've seen Lainey's luck with shells. <laughs> um, I've been on the shelling tour with Chris, and I found a couple good shells, but I think Lainey is like the shell girl, and I'm hoping we find like massively wonderful things on this shelling tour. Maybe when we do the winter tour, we'll have to come back. Yes, maybe so. Yeah, we've got to wash our shells we found the other day and put Krylon, clear coat Krylon on them. Okay, so I am doing this fairly even. I mean, I'm doing a few beads and then doing the spacer beads. I'm keeping that kind of even, but like I said, I'm not going for any, any specific pattern at all. It's just very random as far as picking up the little Heishi beads go. What is that noise? Is there a bug back there? Oh, the hermit crab. Okay. <laughs> Sounded like a big bug flying around. It's her hermit crab making noise. Okay. He's digging in the bottom of the Okay. Tree. I, can, I can handle that. We named her hermit crab Crabby Myrtle because we don't know if it's a girl or a boy, but it's from Myrtle Beach, so. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. She may change the name once she leaves here. She may hate that, but she went along with it. <laughs> I like it. She said she likes it. Okay. I don't know if they can hear you on the video or not. But I got her name. His last name Crab, so I can call him Mr. Crab. Oh, okay. <laughs> Crabby Myrtle Crab. Yeah, sounds good to me. All right, so we're just about done stringing this one up, this first layer. This is the second time we filmed this video. The first time was a hot mess, and it was so much of a hot mess that I just gave up. Um, Y'all know I usually leave a lot of bloopers in, but this was extreme, <laughs> so... I was like, everything went wrong. <laughs> I could not get, I mean, everything went wrong. I dropped hers when she tried to hand it to me to finish it. So she had to restring the whole thing. And I dropped it. And then she dropped it, yeah. And it would have been very frustrating for you all to watch. So I did um, refilm this. <laughs> Hopefully this one works out. Have you got the square Heishi beads? Square? Hey, no, I don't have any square. Oh, Just these. Cool. You can put them on there if you want. But I'm not sure they're going to match your hair. They might go with that pink. If you want to use them, you're welcome to do it. I'm not going to use them. I feel like they don't have the teeth in it. I'll just take them off. <laughs> One thing we've learned is we can restring things, right? right. We have learned that today. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm just randomly putting them on. Okay. And you guys will have to measure for your own. I mean, I have a little cheat sheet that I keep where I know the lengths that I like 
Like if it's a choker, I like it this many inches. If it's a short necklace but not a choker or if it's a long necklace. So I kind of know, I've measured, pre-measured like where I like my lengths to be. And you guys will have to do that for this because, you know, it's different for everybody. It's personal preference. So mine, like I said, this is this one's about uh, 14 inches. This is the shorter strands. So I want it to be, um, but of course they're going to hang on a ring. And then, so it's not like the shortest part of the necklace is only going to be 14 inches. They are going to hang on a ring and um, there will be side, you know, we'll have other beads going up the sides. So keep that in mind, but just... You know, make sure you measure it for how you want it to be. And I'm probably not going to string up this entire 14 inches. I just wanted to have enough to where I could get my, get it hooked onto the ring without too much trouble. It's always better to have extra, and you can use these little pieces of tiger tail for other things. Like, especially if you do um, tassels or something like that, they make really good. You can use them for tassels. Okay, so... This is about as far as I'm going to go with it. And so I'm going to take my rings here. I've got my crimp beads right here. And I've got my lamb shell covers right here. Okay. So what I'm going to do, and if you're using a clamshell cover with a closed ring on it, you're going to need to go ahead and, and loop it around your... Um, Unless you want to hook it on with the jump ring. Yeah, never mind. Okay, so what we're going to do with this one is I'm going to go up, go right up through the bottom with my tiger tail. And then I'm going to take my little crimp bead. And I'm just going to crimp this down really tightly onto my tiger tail. You don't have to use crimping pliers. This isn't going to show, okay? Just make sure it's tight. Then you're going to take your clamshell cover, bring it up, and just close it right up. And you can do that with your fingers, or you're going to do it with pliers, just like that. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other end. Let me see if I can do this without dropping all my beads off. Okay. So we're going to take our clamshell cover, put it right up on there, and then put our crimp bead. Well, a lot of these crimp beads, there's two of them stuck together, which is really weird, but. Okay, so get my crimp bead on there. I'm going to let it. I'm going to let it drop all the way down, and then, now, you don't want this to be super tight, okay? You want it to have a little bit of movement. Not a lot. You don't want your beads floating around like crazy, but make sure that um, it's not stick straight, because that's going to be really... Um, awkward looking on your necklace. Okay, and this crimp bead did not crimp down. Okay. Yeah, you don't want your necklace to be like pokey stick straight, so be careful with that. I'm just crimping this crimp bead down. I'm making sure it's down really good because I don't think I had it crimped really good and I don't want everything falling apart. So get that crimped really tightly on there. Test it. Make sure it's not going to come loose. Okay, it's good. And then you can cut your tiger tail. And then you can close your clamshell cover. Okay. So here is my first row. Now, what I did not do was put my coin bead on there, which is what I intended to do. Oh, okay. So here's what I'm going to do. <laughs> I don't know. Since I didn't put my coin bead on there, I'm actually going to go ahead. I don't know if I want to make, I could make that the bottom row and then do the top row a little bit. I may do that. Okay, I meant to put my coin bead on there. I did not do it, which is really frustrating me. So I'm going to take, um, this is going to hang here. I'm going to go ahead and make this my bottom my um, bottom row instead of my top row, and I'm going to hang my charm from it. So this is like the second filming and I messed up again. <laughs> it's been a day, but I'm going to improvise. I'm just going to take my charm, I'm going to find the middle, and I'm going to hang this charm right here in the middle, and we're going to make this the bottom row instead of the top row. That'll work. 
okay? So there it is. Now I can go ahead and hook it to my rings if I want. And to do that, I just take my open little loop here, hook it around the ring, and then take my pliers and just close it up. You just close it around like that, okay? I'm going to do that on both of them. My little ring on there. Take my pliers and just close it right around. Just like that. Okay, so this is going to become my bottom row now because I messed up and didn't put my coin bead on. And I don't want the coin bead hanging from the bottom. I definitely want it on the top row. So, and actually this is very, very over on the side. We're going to have to move this over. Yeah, I did not get that evenly in the middle. So let's scoot the charm over. Just open your jump ring and scoot it over. You can do that. Find where my jump ring opens. Here it is. Okay, I thought I had that in the middle, but obviously it's not looking very in the middle. Okay, let's do this again. So I just take my two sides, put them together. Yeah, the middle is over a little bit from where I had it. is not even on camera. Scoot up a little bit. Okay, here we go. I'm going to hang it right here. This is the middle. Or closer to the middle than the other one was. Okay. That is much better. All right, now, so that's going to be my bottom row. Actually, it may even need to go over a little bit more. We'll see in a minute once we get this whole thing put together. Okay, so I'm going to do my next row now, and this was going to be the, the uh, bottom, but now it's going to be the top, and it's going to be small. So I'm just going to go ahead, and I'm going to bead this up, and I'm going to use a few, let's see, I'm going to use a rose gold spacer bead, the 4 millimeter one. Then I'm going to do several of the papaya whip, one, two three, four, five, and the white. I'm going to do about five in between each bead. So I'm going to do the rose gold spacer bead, five of these Heishi beads, the white ones and the papaya whip ones mixed. I'm not going to use the teal ones in this because I'm going to do the frosted glass. Okay, then I'm going to do a spacer bead, a frosted glass bead and another spacer bead. Okay, so I'm kind of highlighting the frosted glass between two spacer beads. I'm going to do five more Heishi beads. One, two, three, four, five. Just like that. And then I'm going to do a rose gold lava bead. I'm going to do five more Heishi beads. One, two, three, four, and five. I'm going to do a rose gold lava bead. Is Daniel on public? He might be. Yeah, he records music. And then one, two, three, four. Yes. Yeah. Hold on a second, I'll help you finish your edges. So five more. And then I'm going to do rose gold, frosted glass. Okay, now I have to make sure that I don't get this too. Yeah, I want it to hang right about there. We're going to do another rose gold bead. So rose gold, frosted glass, rose gold, and then I'm going to do, I think another rose gold spacer. Yeah, he's definitely playing the keyboard. And a lava That's bead. Cool. Mm -hmm. Or, I'm sorry, my coin bead. Two more rose gold spacers. Okay, a frosted glass bead. And I really can't see clearly up to my side of my desk. Yeah. Okay, and now we're just going to repeat our pattern back the other side. So another rose gold bead. 
like that. Five Heishi beads. One, two, three, four, five. That's four, five. Okay, a lava bead. Five more Heishi beads. One, two, three, four, and five. So there's our one. We've got another lava bead. Whoops. Another lava bead here. Five more Heishi beads. One, two, three, four, and five. Then we've got a rose gold spacer, a frosted glass bead, another rose gold spacer. Whoops, I caught on my jewelry tools. Five more Heishi beads. One, two, three, four, five, and a rose gold spacer. Okay. So this is going to be our shorter row. And let me make sure I have enough beads on it. I think I do. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to finish off Lainey's necklace. So she's finished hers up and she has got a pattern going with a little um, turtle in the middle. Okay, here's hers. And I'm just going to finish her ends. Now her ends will be really easy. So we've got do this side first because it's got a little more room on it so we're just going to take the same way we did ours we're going to take her lobster or her um, clamshell and put it on and then we're going to do her crimp bead you want to crimp it down really tightly again move the clamshell up and close it just like this okay and same thing on the other end Okay, put her clamshell on, just like this. Where'd her little beads go? Oh, there it is. There's her crimp bead, gold crimp bead, silver crimp bead, and it's got, does it have another bead inside it? Oh. It did, I think it came out. Okay, we're going to close this crimp bead down, crimp it down. There we go, crimp it really tight. You want to make sure that it's really tight and nothing's going to come loose. Okay, we are going to cut the tiger tail and close her clamshell up. Sometimes these clamshells close a little uneven and you just have to play with them with your plier for a minute. Lainey, we didn't get jump rings out for you. Um, I'm just going to put rose gold jump rings on hers for a second and so you can see what I'm doing and then we'll change them. Oh wait, here's a couple. Here's a couple jump rings that are just laying on my desk. We'll use these. Okay, so here's her silver jump rings. I didn't really want to do rose gold in there. I could have changed them later, but so you're just going to take a jump ring, put it right on this one end, and this will be what her lobster will clasp onto. Close it up real good. And then we'll use a jump ring on this other end. And this one will hook the lobster onto, just like this. Okay, and now Lainey has got a really cute single strand Heishi bead necklace with a little turtle in the middle. Adorable. Okay, Lainey, try them on and make sure they fit. All right. Yep, and you can make a bracelet if you want while we're doing this. Okay, so this one, good. I'm going to make just a little bit longer, so I'm going to add a few more beads on each end of this. I'm going to add probably about four or five more Heishi beads on each end. 
and um, another spacer bead. I just want it to be a little bit longer so it's not quite so short. Okay, so now I'm going to do the same thing that I did before. I'm going to take my clamshell cover and I am going to put it on here. I'm going to take my crimp bead, put it on. Okay. And I'm just going to crimp this down. Okay. Scoot this right up. And go ahead and close it. Okay. Now I'm going to add about five more Hoshi beads on this other end. One, two, three, four, five. And another spacer just to make it even with the other five. And then we're going to do the same thing over here. We are going to put the clamshell cover on. Whoops. And this one, I have quite a bit extra because it's going to be my bottom row, if we remember correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and put the crimp bead on. Okay. And I'm going to crimp it down in here. Sure it's crimped down really good. And then I'm just going to cut my tiger tail right here. Okay. And we're going to do the same thing with this one that we did with the other one. We're just going to hook it right on here. Take the plier. Make sure that clamshell is closed up good. And just go ahead and fold it over. Just like that, and same thing on this side. I didn't close either one of those clamshells up, I don't guess. <laughs> they were both open. Okay. Alright, so there we have our little multi-strand part. Now we're going to do the sides. So for these, we're going to do the same thing that we've been doing. We're going to take a crimp or a clamshell cover. Looks like I've got to grab another one here in a second, but we'll do this first. So I have my two 11 inch pieces measured out here for my sides. So we're just going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and put the clamshell on because it's going to attach right to this anyway and it'll also serve as a bead stopper. So I'm going to put it on here just like we've been doing. Put the crimp bead on. Smash the crimp bead down. this. Close up my clamshell. And now I've got to decide kind of how I want my sides to go. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do maybe a couple of spacers here and then just the white Heishi beads straight up the side. I don't want a whole lot going on because um, there's a lot going on down here. So I'm going to put on two of my four millimeter spacers just like this and then I'm just going to beat up the side with a bunch of just the white and the papaya whip I'm not going to use any of the teal I don't think going up the sides just the white and the papaya whip Heishi bead so go ahead and beat up your side and when you get it the length you want it come right on back and we'll finish Okay, so I've got my side, all the way up my side, and I did decide to mix in just a couple of the teal ones every now and then, and I've hooked it onto my ring just like I did last time. So I've got um, seven inches of beads, and I'm going to finish this side, so I'm going to add on two spacers. And then I need to grab another clamshell cover. Let me do that really quickly. Okay, they're right behind me. <laughs> so two spacers, 
a clamshell cover, and another crimp bead. Alright, there we go, right on there. Okay, and you're just going to crimp this down, just like we've been doing, crimp the bead down. Crimp it really tight so nothing falls off, but leave a little movement in there. Don't crimp it to where your beads are poked out weird. I'm having trouble getting in there with my pliers tonight for some reason. It's that little clamshell is wanting to be in my way. Let me get in there. Really good. There we go. Just crimp it down really good. Make sure it's secure. I'm not going to go anywhere. And then you're just going to cut this tiger tail and close up your clamshell. Okay? And we're going to do the same exact thing on the other side. So I've got my other 14 inch piece. I'm going to go ahead and put my clamshell cover on and my crimp just as a bead stopper on the bottom. Okay, and then I'm going to take this down and close up my clamshell, just like this. Now the other side, I want to make sure that I keep even with this side. So I do want to try to do the same amount of beads, you know, in between my green beads. So I'm going to put on two spacers, which is what I started with on the other side. Where are my what? Moon beads. Moon beads? Um, well, it depends on what color you want. They're in the, like, if you want white ones, that's up at the top. You'll probably have to pull the whole drawer out and look. They're in there somewhere. But, like, if you want. I don't know. You'll have to look. I may. You'll just have to look and see. Eleni's wanting moonstone beads. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. We're just going to do the same thing. So, go ahead and beat up the other side and come right on back. Okay, and one thing I meant to tell you guys is I'm not making sure that, like, I have the big ones and the small ones the same. I'm just going to do this many of the white, okay, then the two green, then this many of the white. I'm randomly picking up the white ones. I don't want you to think that I was going to try to get, like, 8 millimeter, 8 millimeter, 6 millimeter. I'm not doing that. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I've got my other side done here. And I'm going to go ahead, I've got it pretty much, I believe, even with the other side. So I'm going to add on my two spacer beads. Then I'm going to put my clamshell cover on. Put my crimp bead on. And I'm going to take my pliers and crimp this crimp bead. Just like we've been doing on all the other ones. I'm going to open this clamshell cover up a little bit so I can get in there and not have to fight with it as much. There we go. That's much easier. Okay, crimp that down. Make sure it's secure. Feels pretty good. I'm going to give it one more little squeeze. And then I'm going to cut this tiger tail off. And close up my clamshell. Okay, so I'm going to take this one and I'm just going to hook it right on here. So again, I'm just taking this little loop here and folding it over like that. And now my necklace is ready to put my lobster clasp on. So one thing I want to do is make sure that it's hanging correctly and it is just like this. Okay, so I'm going to take one of my larger jump rings. I'm just going to hook this on like I've been doing with all the other ones. Close it right down here. Whoops. Make sure it's closed up good. I'm going to make sure this ring is closed up good. Okay, just like that. 
And then I'm going to take a smaller jump ring, not a lot smaller, just a little bit. This is like a six millimeter. This is a thick jump ring though. <laughs> and then I'm just going to hook my lobster onto this. Where's my lobster? There it is. Okay. And then I'm just like I've been doing, I'm just going to close this one down right here. Okay. And then I'm just going to take my lobster clasp and clasp it right onto my ring. And I have a beautiful little Heishi bead multi-strand necklace. So let me put this on a form and I will show it to you all just a moment. Okay, so here is our finished necklace on the form. This is the multi-strand, obviously. Uh, there it is. It goes up here and then we finish it with just the Heishi beads. Turn the camera up a little so you can see it. There's Lainey making her, she's making bracelets now. So there is the multi-strand necklace using the Heishi beads. And here are Lainey's. So she made this one first. This is a little, almost a choker style using the Heishi beads and a little heart charm. So she did a pattern there, and then she's got her heart charm on there. And then this one she did, again, she did a pattern, and she's got her little swimming turtle bead here on the bottom. So these are the Heishi beads, the single strand and the multi strand. They are easy and fun and quick to make. And um, the Heishi beads are on my website. I've got a bunch of colors. I've got a bunch of colors coming in. Um, and the, um, the clamshell covers are on my site as well as charms and spacer beads, all kinds of stuff. So check it out. I will link in the description box below. Um, check out my Facebook group as well. We have a lot of fun over there and, um, yeah, the Heishi beads. I love them. So I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Sadie, look at that seashell. Get it. Get that seashell. Get it. <laughs> Get that seashell. Poke it, lady. See if it'll move. See if she'll... <gasps> Get it. What's in there, Sadie? What is it? Get that seashell. Get it. <laughs> what is that? Sadie, what is it? What's in that seashell? What's in that seashell? Are you tired? <laughs> oh, okay. She's going to leave. There's the seashell.